I wanted to show you a few unusual methods and setups that can help make your tools and your time just a bit more efficient. Everything's sped up a little, just so you don't have to sit through every chip and coolant splash. This first clip shows a double chamfer mill cutting a square on the end of a long shaft, all in one setting. It's one of those little tricks that saves you a reset up and keeps everything nice and concentric. Here I'm using my six inch square insert face mill in a slightly unusual way. Instead of cutting around the outside, I'm using the unused inside cutting zone of the inserts to cut a large chamfer. You can see how short that circular toolpath is compared to running it all the way around. It's one of those small geometry advantages that really adds up over time. The idea here was to machine all six faces of a die in just two settings. A large chamfer on the end mill lets me cut the chamfer all the way around using the same tool that does the top and the profile. And this ball end mill, it's cutting into the block from five different directions, all in the same setup. Saves a lot of time, and honestly, it's just fun to watch. To save a bit of time, and to extend insert life, this next one shows the benefit of using that inside cutting zone again. Zigzag milling, in this case, cuts the time almost in half. It's one of those methods that's easy to overlook, but once you try it, you don't really go back. If you ever get tired of resetting your indicator on the lathe, here's a nice, simple trick. Just use an indicator with a swivel spigot in the tailstock. You can check outside diameters, bores and faces without ever moving the indicator. No special tooling required, and you'll be amazed how much quicker it goes. Helical milling is another one of those underused techniques. It keeps the tool in a continuous cut, increases the material removal rate, and the machine just sounds happy. Now this long piece, six feet of it, needed precision dovetails, but it was taller than the machine. So I used the 90 degree head to get the reach. Not the fastest setup, but sometimes you just have to make do with what you've got. Here's a modified button face mill I use for Delrin plugs. It faces them to length, chamfers and spot drills, all in about a second. And with tandem milling, I can face off two parts at once. Cuts the cycle time down and eliminates back cutting. This next one's a bit surprising. My six inch face mill cutting a quarter inch thick plate sticking three inches out of the vise. No chatter. That's thanks to a tangential approach, letting the inserts gradually engage along the length. Makes a deep quarter inch cut look easy. Machining Delrin without chipping the edge, totally possible. I'm using a button insert cutter here, 20 millimeter buttons taking a 12 millimeter deep cut and the edge stays clean right to the end. Here's another example of tandem milling. Really boosts production by machining two parts almost simultaneously. Once you get your offset sorted, it's surprisingly simple. People sometimes say a three-axis machine needs six setups to get all six sides. I like to see if I can do it in two. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But it's a good challenge. This clip shows a standard button cutter machining extra features. It faces off two parts at once, just one pass, no back cutting, and the finish comes out at the submicron level. Then it feeds down to put a chamfer on top. There's a tiny dip, maybe two tenths, right in the middle, but both corners are exactly where they should be. I'll take that any day. Here are three ways to find the center of a round part using an edge finder. No DRO, so backlash has to be considered. The first method uses two moves, and it works because you know the x-axis center distance of your V-block. The Y position's easy, just measure it right in the block. If you don't have a V-block, the three-move method works too. You just add the radius of the part and the edge finder, 
and as long as you always move in the same direction, backlash cancels itself out. And finally, yes, it's possible to find the center in just one move. It's surprisingly accurate and fast. Here's something simple, a clip-on indicator holder for the mill. Most of the time, you can leave the cutting tool in the spindle and just use the holder to indicate your part. Once you make one, you'll wonder how you got by without it. If you don't have a rotary table or CNC, you can still make large round chamfers. Try plunging in eight positions, only three coordinates to remember and one of them zero. Nice and low tech. There are plenty of ways to machine a triangle on a rotary table. These next two use the floating pin technique to locate the part or the vise. I start by engraving the triangle with CNC, just as a visual reference. In the first method, the apex of the triangle sits over the center of the rotary table. In the second, I move the center of the triangle over the rotary table center. That way, the end of one cut becomes the start of the next. Much faster once you get the hang of it. It's the preferred approach among machinists. V-blocks are great for quickly squaring the ends of a batch of parts. Simple, accurate and dependable. Stacked coin candlesticks don't have to be turned on the lathe. One good setup on the mill can finish the entire profile in one go. And finally, those mirror-angled serrated blocks that are such a pain to align. Using CAD, a magnetic chuck and a sign bar really helps. Still takes patience, but at least you can see what you're doing. So that's a few of the small tricks and odd setups I've found useful over the years. Nothing fancy, just practical ways to make the most of the tools you already have. Thanks for watching, and I hope a couple of these ideas come in handy in your own shop.